This meeting is being recorded. Hello everyone and welcome to our virtual career spotlight on behalf of Chinook School Division and the Regina Industry Education Council. My name is Lisa Kuntz Samanuk. I am the Chinook School Division Industry Education Program Facilitator. Before we begin our spotlight today, I'd remind you, like to remind you and students, to take a moment following the presentation to complete the brief student survey and be entered into a draw for $50. Your feedback is important in helping us to arrange future spotlights. We will also have some time at the end of the presentation today for you to ask any questions or you may contact Tanisha directly. Thank you. For those of you just joining us, we are pleased to have Tanisha Francis with us today from Swift Current. Tanisha is an Indigenous advocate and artist from Nikonit First Na Cree First Nation and is currently working as a library assistant at the Chinook Regional Library, Swift Current Branch. She is passionate about sharing her culture, cre creating art, and engaging with the community. Tanisha teaches Cree arts and culture workshops for all ages around the Swift Current area with her cookum or grandma, Eloise Mosquito. She recently obtained a certificate of liberal arts from the University of Regina in 2021, through which she explored a wide range of topics and fields of study. Tanisha is planning to return to the university in the fall of 2022 to continue her studies in the arts faculty. Please join me in welcoming Tanisha. Take it away, Tanisha. Uh, thank you, Lisa, and thank you for having me. I'm Tonse, uh, Tanisha Nasigasen. Hello, my name is Tanisha. I am from Nikonit First Nation, which is just southeast of Maple Creek, and I currently live and work in Swift Current and area. Um, I'm a library assistant with the Chinook Regional Library Swift Current Branch, and I also do um, Indigenous cultural um, and arts education in the community. Um, like Lisa said, I'm really passionate about sharing my culture and um, connecting with the community through it. So I'm really excited um, to tell you more about that. So um, yeah, that's a little bit about me. I graduated from the Swift Current Comprehensive High School in Swift Current in 2014. Um, I took a couple years off um, after that, and when I decided to go back to university, I had to upgrade some of my classes, so I had to continue my grade 12 education through the Great Plains College, and that was in 2017. Um, it was a really good experience for me to um, go to the college and be in that setting of adult education and have small class sizes, so it really benefited me going into university when I was accepted in 2018. Um, again, I was able to take quite a few classes face-to-face -face through the college. And again, I was really grateful that I didn't have to um, leave Swift Current for school and I was able to stay at home and take my classes both online at home and through the college. So that was really great. And, um, 2021, I received my Certificate of Liberal Arts, which is kind of a general studies certificate. I graduated with 60 credits, which is a little more than you need, but I just couldn't get enough. <laughs> and uh, I am returning to university in the fall, and I've been accepted into the Reconciliation Studies, which again is another kind of general studies certificate, but based on Indigenous studies. So I work, this is where I work at the Swift Current Library. It's a branch from the Chinook Regional Library. Uh, it's a, libraries have become like a community center. So it's not just books and uh, studying. We do a lot more than that. Um, library assistants actually have a wide range of tasks and jobs within the library to make it run as efficiently and usingly as possible. So um, the services we provide include Wi-Fi, access to public computers, um, public bathrooms, um, printers, uh, books, movies, video games, and you know puzzles. And we even have a 3D printer, so that, that's really cool. Um, there's a lot of jobs that we do. Uh, most of it is working with the public. So we use a lot of 
problem solving skills and interpersonal skills with that. Uh, we get a lot of requests that um, maybe we weren't trained for, but we have to use, again, those problem solving skills to find resources and information for people, whatever they might be looking for. So a lot of that, um, just figuring out what people want. So recently that's been um, a lot of printing the QR codes for vaccination um, status stuff and accessing computers. Um, we also obviously do a lot of book ordering and renewing over the phone and in person. Uh, a lot of book shelving and we organize the library's large collection. This um, requires a lot of attention to detail and using the Dewey Decimal System, we use alphabetical and numeric ordering to make sure the books um, are put back in the right place so that we can find them again. Um, once a book is misshelved, it's basically lost. So it can be really difficult to find books if they're misshelved. So it's important. It's a really important job, a little bit of an underrated job in the library. And no, we don't just read books all day. <laughs> it's a lot more than that. Um, a major, major part of that is the program and workshops. So we have um, programming for all ages and interests. We hold a lot of daytime programs for um, older people. We have card groups for bridge, west, crib, and Maison. There's a knitting and crochet group. Uh, we have a lot of kids programs as well. We do a daytime and an evening story time. We have an afternoon kids um, makerspace where they get to play with different STEM-based activities and uh, as well as some indigenous programming, which I am lucky to help with. We've done a couple of dream catcher workshops, um, a leather medicine bag and beaded bracelet workshop. And in March, there was four Saturdays in March where Métis culture was taught, um, including a big beading workshop, jigging, and a Red River cart workshop that was held by Tequila Friday. Um, the Swift Grant also has a book club through the library. And our tech lady, Krupali, offers a lot of programs to learn about technology for people who might not know or for older people on how to use email and YouTube and Google Drive and all that stuff. So I think the library is just a wealth of information and has access to so many services and resources. And that's what I really love about working at the library. Um, some of the challenges is physically, we're on our all day. We um, stand up at the front desk, which is a majority of the work. We um, are walking around the library, um, cleaning and shelving books. We do a lot of lifting and bending and reaching to shelve books as well as um, moving furniture and different stuff around the library. So that can be really demanding. Um, another part is, again, problem solving. A lot of times people come in with questions that we don't have the answers to. And so we have to figure out the best way to either find those answers, whether it's an address or a phone number or some other resource, um, such as connecting them to something in the community that might have more information and better services for them. So. We do a lot of that um, for people that come in and need it. We assist people with technology and computers, which a lot of people can find difficult to explain to someone who might be a little older and might not understand technology as well. So it can be a challenge to help them either make a resume, print something, photocopy something, or to email something to someone. And a lot of times maybe they don't understand or remember their passwords. So it's a lot of patience, um, which can be demanding. And, uh, and in line with that, people can often get frustrated and become rude, which uh, you just have to practice being understanding and empathetic that they might be having a hard time and uh, not to take it personally. So there's a lot of challenges with working with the public. Um, the rewards uh, greatly outweigh the challenges, uh, helping people find the resources and connecting them with information is really rewarding. A lot of times they're really grateful and it's just satisfying to be helpful and to make people's lives a little bit easier 
We all need a little extra kindness in these times. Uh, we also, as I said, alphabetically and numerically order books through the Dewey Decimal System, which I find really satisfying. As a person who likes organization and keeping things in order, that's a really satisfying part of the job uh, is making sure the books get in the right place, that they all look uniform, that the shelves are clean and tidy. And that's a really satisfying part for me. And uh, again, people are generally really nice, patient and grateful when you help them out. And sometimes they even bring in um, ways to show their, Attitude through food. We get a lot of home baked goods and sometimes bring pizza and chocolates and even flowers. So that's a that's a really great reward. Not just able to help someone and then being grateful, but um, being grateful enough to show their support for us in that way. So the details of this part-time library assistant job. Um, I started at about $15 an hour and I get about 15 to 20 hours a week, maximum 30. So it really varies in the summer when other people, the full-time positions are on summer holidays. I get a lot more hours and in the winter, not hours. So um, through the Chinook Regional Library, we do get a pension and benefits plan, which is really great. Even though I'm a part-time person, we are still included in that plan. So that's really beneficial. We get stat holidays off and we're also closed Sundays. Our regular hours are 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. most days. So that's not bad. Um, and here's some of the programs I've been involved with through the library. So we had an orange shirt day in September where we made orange dream catchers because orange is the color of residential school survivors, as well as reconciliation. We also chose dream catchers to represent the hopes and dreams of the survivors, which were taken away from them through residential schools. Um, and it is something that we're hoping to restore by having these community events where we can connect and learn about those things and have some form of reconciliation through that. Um, this is a program I developed. It's called the Indigenous Story Circle. It's a kids program where we read a um, indigenous authored children's book. Uh, we learn Cree words and numbers and we do a craft. So we learn the Cree Tonte song by the end of it, all my little five, four and five year olds were singing along in Cree, which um, what it's all about, that really warmed my heart and to be able to teach that culture to the community and to kids who maybe are a part of that culture, but didn't get to grow up in it um is, is amazing to me so that was that was great here's some of our crafts that we did with that uh in february it was indigenous storytelling month unfortunately due to the covid numbers we had to move this to a virtual workshop and this is me with my gucko Eloise, my grandmother and we taught people through a youtube video about the four main traditional medicines, sage, sweet grass, cedar, and tobacco, and made a medicine bag. Um, if the workshop was in person, we would have been able to do that in person and everyone would have gotten a little bit of the traditional medicine to put into their medicine bags. But uh, virtually we just made the medicine bags. We also did beaded bracelets for that same um, February workshop and the bracelets were sent out across the Chinook Regional Library to rural branches. So it was kind of, it was far reaching and um, I was really glad to make it accessible to as many people as possible. And that uh, moves us into what I do in the community independently um, through Indigenous arts and culture education. Uh, I teach people about Cree culture, language and art. We do a lot of hands-on workshops. So the dream catchers, the medicine bags and the beaded bracelets. And I also get to work with um, a lot of different community organizations. I have a lot of great opportunities and connections in the community. So the Chinook School Division, the Great Plains College, the Southwest Newcomers Welcome Center, 
the Chinook Regional Library, Art Gallery of Swift Current, and the Swift Current Truth and Reconciliation Community. They're all great organizations and have given me a lot of opportunities to engage with the community and with my culture. So really grateful for that. Um, of course, there's challenges with being um, an entrepreneur. entrepreneur. Um, it's just me doing all of work. So responding to the emails, um, buying supplies, and putting together the kits for workshops, doing research if I need to, and um, really everything that happens is um, me sitting down and doing work. So it can be challenging that way to um, take on the workload and the responsibility. Um, it can be inconsistent. There's a lot of times where I'm really busy, um, especially around Orange Shirt Day and National Indigenous Peoples Day. Um, there are a lot of times where I don't have this kind of opportunity to do work um, for a whole month or months. So it can be inconsistent way which is why I have another job at the library, which also gives me opportunities to do this work. But like I said, it's a lot of responsibility and hard work behind the scenes to make it all go smoothly and to reach as many people as possible and to be professional about it. So that's all on me. And uh, my workplace is my house. So it can be hard to separate work from home when it's uh, the same place so that's a challenge as well um and again the rewards are so much greater and they're so worth it so I get to share and teach my culture with the community um which I love to do and there's been a lot of demand for it recently which is exciting um I'm raising awareness and appreciation for Korean and indigenous culture which again is people are looking for that and I'm very happy to to help people and to teach people um, with the dream catcher kits and the medicine bags and the beaded bracelets, I put those together by hand with um, supplies that I find and source. So a lot of this stuff is stuff I've made with my hands and then someone else gets to finish it and have this thing that they get to keep and it's really great to watch. And of course, I love doing it and I'm really lucky to do it as a career. And as a job, it barely feels like work most of the time. Um, the details, again, the wage isn't hourly, and it depends on where and who I work with. Uh, the average can be anywhere from $100 to $300, as a lot of times they call it an honorarium. So that can be for the whole day. And uh, any supplies that I buy and create the kits with, I am usually reimbursed for, so that's like a, a dollar amount per kit per person kind of thing. So that can be anywhere from 100 to 400, possibly roughly in a day, again, depending on how many people there are and where I work. There's no benefits or pension, uh, and I have no days off officially, although I do get to make my own schedule um, average. I work is that's supposed to be five plus hours a week. So anywhere from five to 20 hours a week, sometimes depending on how busy I am. And uh, I do have to work on this kind of on the side after working, you know, sometimes an eight to 10 hour day, I, I come home and I continue to work from home on various things like this. So that can be really challenging as well as not having any days off unless you force yourself to have a day off. Um, and here's some of the projects I have been a part of through that. So this is with the Chinook School Division. I was at the Sydney Street School for Orange Shirt Day and we did some book readings of Phyllis's Orange Shirt. Uh, this is really great. In all the classrooms that I went to, I asked the kids if they knew why we were wearing orange shirts and all of them knew that it was for the First Nations kids or the kids who didn't come home. So that was really amazing that they're not only just wearing the orange shirts as some kind of day to school, but they know why and the teachers are telling them or their parents. And that's amazing to see. And that's that's why I do it. Um, 
I was asked by the Chinook Regional Library to create a design for Orange Shirt Day. This kind of went with the Orange Dreamcatcher Day. I created this design and I hand beaded it. This took quite a, quite a few hours. And later the Chinook Regional Library created pins, which were distributed throughout the region to different libraries and even to some schools. So I've seen a lot of people wearing these, which is amazing. That's something that I created um in my head and and handmade it and so it's amazing to see that um in the public this is another graphic project that i did oh. i created this land acknowledgement design for the chinook regional library i've also distributed it to a different couple different organizations um for their usage but it uh, was inspired by as long as um, the sun shines, the grass grows and the river flows. And I also incorporated the infinity sign to represent the Métis people, which is um, this land is the homeland of the Métis as well as many other nations. And a lot of the times they were included in the treaty process. So it's not just a treaty for um, acknowledgement because that isn't inclusive to all people that originally from this land. So I'm happy I could include that. And I was really happy. This is my original design um, that I painted on the right. And then I cre recreated it through a graphic design that was made into a giant sticker decal, as you can see on the left side there. And this was also distributed through all of the Chinook Regional Library branches. And yeah, it just makes me happy that something that meaningful um, and something I made is out in the community and is hopefully bringing awareness to the land that we live on and the people who originally lived here. Uh, recently, I w exhibited my art with the Art Gallery of Swift Current, the West Wing Gallery. It's the Southwest Open Exhibition. Again, this is beadwork that I, that I created on canvases. And it was three of my pieces were displayed in summer 2021. This is another great opportunity for me, another first. I was really proud to be able to show it and show people that Indigenous beadwork is not just uh, a craft. It can be art and it should be considered art. And for the gallery to display it, uh, really amazing and meaningful for me to represent um, my culture that way. So that was really exciting. And again, uh, through the Art Gallery of Swift Current, I'm teaching a beadwork class. So we'll be doing some traditional Cree beadwork. And that starts in April. So a little self promo there. Um, if you're interested in any beadwork. And lastly, the best thing about my job is that I get to work with my Gukum. She's basically raised me. Uh, she's taught me everything that I know. She's one of the sweetest, kindest persons that I that I know. So I'm really, really lucky to be able to work with her and to continue to learn from her. And she deserves all the praise. And yeah, she's really great. She's um, a knowledge keeper with Neek and Eat and an elder's helper, recently upgraded to elder. Uh, she teaches Cree with the Neek Neat children and adults. She teaches beadwork classes and leatherworking classes. And that's a small part of her role as a knowledge keeper and an elder is to teach di different generations and the next generation our language and our culture and our traditions. And so that it can be carried on and it can, um, have some longevity and not uh, not fade away. So she does an amazing job of that. And she does a lot to pass on knowledge, not just to me, but to our community. So I'm really, really happy and proud to know her. And I love her a lot. Um, and yeah, lastly, it, you can find me on Instagram at whitebuffalowoman.sk. And if anyone has any questions, that's all. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Tanisha. You know, as I was 
preparing for this with you, um, it was interesting to see and listening to you today too, that really, you, although we we promoted it as a library assistant and looking at, you know, Indigenous culture and that, you actually have a passion in three different areas. You have three different jobs that you've, you know, you're doing the library assistant, yeah. <laughs> which has given you lots of things and giving you a lot, uh, an ability to do many things, but you are into arts and graphic design and maybe mm -hmm. you didn't even realize that. And then you're an Indigenous educator. Yeah. <laughs> So it's exciting to see that. Yeah, you, yeah. As they say, I wear many hats. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I have a few questions, but I'm going to just turn the floor open and see if anyone else has any questions. And if not, I'll I'll continue and ask some questions. Okay. I really, um, it's Renette here, Tanisha. I really like the way you've uh, incorporated your passion uh, into a job, and I think that's you know that's what makes it so nice for students to hear your story and. And you, you know, you make it sound very easy and very rewarding and self-rewarding, but I mean, obviously there's a lot of challenge with that, but your passion really speaks volumes. So thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah, thank you. Was, again, growing up as, you know, a young person, sometimes it's hard to see those um, opportunities and not just see career paths, you know, as, you go to school to be a teacher and then you're a teacher, or you, those kinds of things. And that's amazing too. And we all need those kinds of careers, but there are opportunities if you work really hard and you have a little bit of luck as well that you can um, do things like this as part of your career as well, which is really exciting. There isn't really like a, a job title for it or school, but I was lucky to kind of find my way to that. So yeah, I'm really happy. Tanze, Tanze Kia, Tanisha, it's uh, Mark. Tanze. Uh, first of all, I just want to say Kosi to you. Uh, thank you very much. You did a very good job in your presentation. Uh, I just want to ask you how how important to you is is your ability or your um, ability to get across language within, especially the Cree language, Nayao, I'm assuming you're Nayao, um, in what mm -hmm. do you do? Do you find that people are asking you for Cree language uh, supports and, and that sort of thing? Yeah, yeah, language is definitely really important and it is something that I'm not um, as knowledgeable as I would like to be. Uh, so yeah, it's it's good to start. And when in my story time with the kids, I was learning right along with them. We did the Tonsei song, which is a repetitive English um, Cree alternating song. And so it kind of, through a song can teach you the basic words. And I learned right along with them, like, hello, hello, Tonse, Tonse, like, how are you, Tonse Kia? And so it was amazing that way. And same with the number song, like we, I was teaching it to four and five-year-olds and the parents were learning as well. And it was, it was really amazing. And uh, part of, part of me, obviously I didn't grow up speaking Gokum speaks to me but it's those kind of things that you say to um say to your kids or something like that like uh you know come here you know eat sit down all those kinds of things that my Gokum would tell me but people are interested and I've had um opportunities to teach those to teach ch children's level Cree which is my level of Cree as well. So it's nice. But yeah, it's it's something that people are looking for and something I think that the community could benefit from that and Michif. I feel like we have a really large community of Metis people in Swift Current and uh, that want to reconnect their culture. And that's a really great way to do it is through the language. And even if it's just learning really basic stuff and using that in your day-to-day -day, colors, numbers, um, saying hello and how to say your name and stuff like that. That's, you got to start somewhere. So I would suggest that. Yeah, the language, the language and the art, especially for you, the art, because you've done such a good job of it. Um, I think it's, it's really important that you keep, keep doing what you do. Yeah, it's amazing. Thank you. Thank you.
Hey, Tanisha, it's Lisa again. Um, I have just a couple of questions I wanted to ask you. One was about, um, you know, when you speak or when I meet you in person, you you do talk a little bit about your work, but you don't see, you didn't see yourself perhaps as an entrepreneur. Uh, what led you to pursue that? Yeah. <laughs> um, actually, my girlfriend, she, for as long as I can remember, did something similar. She traveled around to different places. Um, she did a lot of traveling when I was young and I would go with her. As I said, she basically raised me. I would travel along with her when I did. And she would just do that. She would go and teach beating classes and speak to different organizations. And a lot of people still ask her to do that work. And luckily, I've been able to kind of take on a little bit of it as she's trying to retire <laughs> from it. Um, in a way. But yeah, she really showed me that it, um, it's possible and that people, if you find the right connections, are really interested in it and that you can make money from it and make a living off of it, which she did for a long time. She sold her beadwork. Um, she would go to powwows and sell beadwork and regalia, which is the um, the dresswear that people wear at powwows for dancing. And she um, was, yeah, probably wouldn't consider herself an entrepreneur, but is definitely. She And that's how I saw that it was possible. And I learned a lot of what I know from her and again yeah I don't really consider myself that but I guess I kind of uh, fell into that as well <laughs> yeah you did and you certainly fell into the the role of an artist as well I know you don't see yourself as that but as I was watching you um, do your presentation today lots is connected around art and and you're very artistic so I appreciate the fact that you're willing to share that mm -hmm. and uh I hope that you see yourself as an entrepreneur and an artist as well. Um, another question that I had for you, um, Tanisha, is really around education. Uh, you have a very interesting um, career path, and it was exciting to hear how you said, you know, you could stay in your own community. It's not, you don't have to go outside, like move to move to the larger centers. You could stay in your own community, and any, at least to start. Mm -hmm. And you embraced that here and took that journey. And then you went on to do this certificate of liberal arts, which is something that I'm unfamiliar with. Can you tell us more about mm -hmm. that? Yeah, yeah, it was something that when I went to the college, I was originally accepted into a different program, um, or I applied as that program. It was one of the few university courses that they offered fully through the through the college, so that's kind of why I was drawn to it, as well as the idea of a general studies, that it wasn't just specific classes, and that you can kind of take what you want to learn about and what you're interested in, so I was able to take a wide range of classes from religious studies to anthropology to um, a Cree language class. I took biology, uh, uh, social work, uh, psychology. I was able to take just basically anything I was interested in and get credits for it and put that towards the certificate. They also have a diploma version which requires a few more credits. If you achieve the liberal arts diploma it's the base credits to apply for the bachelor of arts so it's kind of it they describe it as a laddering process which i'm hoping to continue with but it again you can take it through the great plains college similar to like they have a nursing program i think still possibly and um but some of those other programs that you can stay in your community you can have face-to-face -face classes as well as online classes and kind of do it that way. And again, not have to go and move to Regina or Saskatoon or something like that. Um, that was really attractive to me. Um, it's hard being a student, let alone being away from home and having all those extra expenses. So it was nice. And yeah, the general, uh, the liberal arts certificate is really just, uh, credit for uh, getting as many credits as you can uh, and being able to pursue any line of study like I could have taken. They do have a requirement of taking a class from each faculty. So I was um, required to take a science credit, um, a math credit, which I was able to take um, a philosophy uh, logic 
kind of class. They require you to take an Indigenous studies class, which was really interesting. Obviously, that was my interest. So I didn't have um, any issue with that, but it was it was nice to see that they required that as part of the certificate. It's not just English, math, science, that Indigenous studies was a requirement as well. So everyone taking that um, and even taking that as a first step towards a bachelor in the arts faculty. So that could be towards education or towards history or anything like that, that they were required to take an Indigenous component. So that was really interesting. But yeah, it was, it was great. I learned a lot about a lot of different things. And I think that helped me with this career path is that I have a wide ranging knowledge base and it was, it was really great. I just really enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, it was really interesting, obviously being able to explore different faculties and different um, fields of study is, um, yeah, it was great. I really enjoyed it. And I got some, I got a certificate out of it. <laughs> Well, that's always good, eh? Well, thanks. Mm -hmm. I, I learned a lot about that. I think that that's something that students could consider pursuing in the future because often, like you said, when you leave high school, you're not sure what you want to do, but you yeah. do want to pursue your education. You want to leave your opportunities open. And this allows you to go into a variety of career paths, maybe choose a career mm -hmm. path you hadn't really even considered because it just gives you a yeah. broader experience of things. So that's yeah, something. Yeah, you get, you get into school and you don't have to yeah, pick right away what you want to do or if you're not sure, you can still start that journey with your education. No, if not, thanks again, uh, Tanisha. Your um, presentation today was very inspiring um, and uh, it was interesting to see the three kinds of pathways that you've chosen and meld it into a, a pathway or a, a life that you're <laughs> passionate about. Um, we will certainly share this with others uh, on our YouTube channel. So uh, we'd like to remind viewers when they, when they watch this to take our survey at the end as well, just to share their feedback and give us ideas for future spotlights. And uh, thanks again, Tanisha. Yeah, thank you.